Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Turkey Riggies. That's right, we are making chicken riggies with turkey, which I think might be the perfect way to use up those Thanksgiving leftovers. And if anyone was looking for a reason to buy a bird that was a couple pounds too big, this central New York recipe is a very good reason. Oh, and by the way, we're doing a baked casserole version, so this is even easier to put together and serve. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by cutting up some leftover turkey. And what you see me cubing up here is about a pound and a half of jerk spice rubbed roast turkey breast from a video we just posted called Jerky Roast Turkey. And it really was amazing, and it worked incredibly well in this. But any leftover roast turkey will work, no matter how you flavored it, or how moist or how tragically dry it came out. What we'll do is simply chop that up into small pieces like this, and we'll transfer that into a bowl, along with the next two riggy ingredients, which for me is going to be some drained and chopped up pepperoncini pickled peppers, as well as some sliced up pitted Kalamata aloes. And yes, any kind of pickled or fresh peppers will work, as will any kind of olives, unless they have pits in them, in which case those are a horrible idea. In fact, let me double check these don't have pits. All right, we're good. And that's it. Once that's done, we can set it aside and we can go ahead and start our sauce which begins by tossing one hot Italian sausage we removed from the casing into this pot containing a little bit of olive oil, which has been set over medium high heat. And what we'll do while that starts to brown is go ahead and break it up into nice small pieces. Okay, I say the smaller the better, but I say a lot of things, so who knows? And you go ahead and break that up any which way you want. But in any event, once that's been crumbled and is sizzling nicely in the pot, we will go ahead and toss in some diced onion along with, if we have them, some sliced mushrooms. And we'll also, as tradition dictates, toss in a nice big pinch of salt. And we will give all that a stir. And we will cook that for about three or four minutes or until those onions soften and sweeten and start to turn translucent. And how far you go here is up to you. All right, we can just do this for a few minutes or we could really take our time and brown this fairly severely, which would give this a little more of a sweeter flavor profile. But since the turkey meat I'm using already sort of has that, I don't feel the need to go quite as long. So like I said, as soon as those onions turn translucent and our mixture looks something like this, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna deglaze the bottom, as we call it in the business, with a nice big splash of white wine. And deglazing simply means using a liquid to remove all that beautiful brown down goodness from the bottom of a pan, which just simply simmering the liquid will take care of mostly. But to hedge our bets, as we stir, we always wanna scrape along the bottom and then what we'll do, besides giving this the occasional stir, is wait for that wine to reduce and pretty much evaporate. So yes, we need you to pay attention here and not go anywhere, because if it goes too far, it will burn and you'll have to start over. So we'll keep a close eye on this, and a few minutes later, the bottom of our pot should look like this. And as soon as that happens, we will immediately, but very carefully, dump in a couple cups of chicken broth, plus one jar of prepared pasta sauce, and in case you're keeping score at home, I'm using a nice marinara. And as usual, anytime we dump in a jar of sauce, we'll want to rinse that out with a cup of water, and we'll shake the jar and pour that in. And then we will finish up with the adding liquids portion of the program by stirring in a little splash of cream. And then what we'll do at this point is simply wait for this to come back to a simmer. And while we do, we can go ahead and toss in our chopped up turkey, which has been hanging out with our peppers and olives. And we'll go ahead and stir that in. And as I think I just mentioned, we're going to wait for this to come up to a simmer. And once it does, we'll give it another stir. And we will reduce our heat to medium low. And then we'll just simmer this gently for about 15 minutes. Okay, this doesn't need to cook long since this casserole is getting baked for like 45 minutes. But we do want to simmer things a little bit before we add our rigatoni. So what I suggest is having the pasta water ready alongside so that once our sauce is simmering, we can boil our pasta, and the timing should work out just about perfectly. And as usual, we'll be boiling our pasta in some well-salted water. All right, it's supposed to taste like the sea, which is pretty salty. And as far as the cooking time goes, I would suggest cooking this two minutes under whatever the package says for doneness. Since like I said, we're gonna bake this with the sauce in the oven for about 45 minutes. And that's it, once our timer rings, we will carefully transfer that rigatoni into our sauce, and of course you can use a different shape pasta if you want. You just can't call it turkey riggies. 
And that's it. Once our pasta has been transferred in, we'll take a spoon and give this a thorough mixing, which we can do right in the casserole dish. I just think it's way easier to do in the pot. And then once that has been thoroughly and thoughtfully mixed, we'll go ahead and transfer that into our casserole dish. And your standard 9 by 12 or 13 baking dish would be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and ladle that in. And once I ladled, I decided to spoon, just to make sure everything was evenly distributed. And once that was accomplished, I moved on to inserting some cheese. Okay, I broke up about 8 ounces of fresh mozzarella, and I dotted the top. And once the top was dotted, I went ahead and used my spoon to push that down into the surface, just so it would not melt into one solid layer on top. And if you want to use something like a provolone here, or a Monterey Jack, or a Fontina, go for it. I mean, you are, after all, the Count Negroni of your turkey rigatoni. And really, any kind of melty cheese would work. And that's it. Once it was mozzarella I went ahead and finished up by grating over some Parmesan. You know, the real stuff. Parmigiano-Reggiano. Except no substitutes. Oh, and I should mention, since I'm kind of intentionally overfilling this, we should probably place this on a foil lined sheet pan like I did here, because there's a very good chance we're going to have some stuff bubbling over. And that's it. After I finished cheesing the top, this was ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes, or until the sides are bubbling and everything's beautifully browned. And it hopefully looks like this. And because we did fill this all the way to the top, and that rigatoni does swell up as it bakes a little more, our casserole is bursting at the seams. And I just love how those pieces of rigatoni have popped up above the surface, kind of poking up here and there with their beautiful browned edges. Oh yeah, that is very inviting and provocative. And then I do think we should let this wait about 10 or 15 minutes before we serve it, during which time we could sprinkle over a little freshly chopped Italian parsley. So I parsleyed and I waited, and I took a few pictures, but I mostly waited. And then I grabbed a fork to dig in. And yes, I'm going to plate some up in a second, but I just had to take a quick taste. And I'll get to the flavor soon, which was phenomenal. But before that, let me just touch on the amazing textures. Right, the combination of that soft, saucy rigatoni underneath the surface with that beautifully brown, crunchy rigatoni on the top is a pairing that's hard to beat. And I think makes things a little more interesting than your traditional riggies, which are just tossed in the sauce and then plated up and not baked. But anyway, the point is I loved having both textures. And then after my little sneak preview, I went ahead and spooned some into a bowl, which I served alongside some bitter greens that I dress in olive oil and lemon. And that's it. I finished up with a little bit of parsley and then one small, very optional drizzle of olive oil just for a little extra richness. And so the top sparkles for the pictures. And that's it. My turkey riggies were ready to enjoy. And as much as I love the texture, the flavor of this is just off the charts. Right, even if you use just a plain roast turkey, it's going to be great. But that I was using that sort of spicy, little bit sweet, very aromatic jerk spice rub turkey made this even more complex and special. And if the main goal of a turkey leftover recipe is not reminding you that you just ate roasted turkey, then man, did we accomplish that here. Okay, at no point while you're enjoying this are you going to be thinking about leftover turkey. You're going to be thinking things like, wow, I can't believe how flavorful this is. And geez, he was really right about the texture. And also, turkey riggies? Shouldn't we just shorten it and call it triggies? Well, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Maybe we should call this triggies. But no matter what you call it, or what else you decide to toss in, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.